one show I've always wanted to cover is HBO's fantasy epic Game of Thrones. Unfortunately, the show ended before this channel was born. Now that House of the Dragon has aired three years after the finale of Game of Thrones, I can finally fulfill this wish of mine and take a stab at it. Let's ride into the woods and analyze the pilot episode of House of the Dragon. The pilot was watched by nearly 10 million people in the US on day one itself, 20 million in the four days since. In comparison, the most watched episode of Game of Thrones was watched by 13 million people. This is the highest opening in the company's history, so much so of a success that the show was immediately renewed for season 2. There are many reasons why this episode proves the show is a worthy prequel of Game of Thrones. The costumes, the special effects, the empathetic characters, the production design, the fights, the raw cruelty and violence of certain scenes. Nevertheless, it ultimately comes down to one thing, story. Every honest and satisfying story, especially in Game of Thrones worthy ones, has to be rich of two ingredients, tension and conflict. Try not to look too relieved, sir. I am relieved. Every time that golden beast brings you back unspoiled, saves my head from a spike. The pilot episode is the DNA to the series and the setup of the first season. Maybe the setup for all seasons. What it must deliver is the premise, the world, the characters, and the hook. Its main objective is to nail down these high level basics. And House of the Dragon does so through conflict and tension between the main characters. The setup happens before the hero, and in this case the heroine, Rhaenyra Targaryen, goes on the journey that will transform her forever. The pre-transformation main character and the world need to be established. Especially in a Game of Thrones prequel, world building is key. Setting it up early is everything. The episode brilliantly casts a wide net on the world and demonstrates the conflicts lurking in the many corners the show will explore. This episode is a before picture that allows us to appreciate the things that are about to change and how much they are going to change. The characters are shown as flawed just the same as the world is. It is deeply rotten and it is about to change. The protagonist, Rhaenyra, is also shown as an underdog, a woman in a man's world. One more reason to root for her. <laughs> All major characters are introduced by conveying their major conflicts and desires. And all of these desires evolve around the Iron Throne. One of the key ingredients of Game of Thrones and House of the Dragon proceeds in the same direction and makes this pilot extremely intriguing is its use of what McKee calls cast design and McKendrick calls characters network or nexus. Every fictional character functions within a cat's cradle of interactions. Certain traits of the protagonist and antagonist are revealed often only through relationships with each other or with circumstances, either external or internal, and events played out in action and reaction. Under the pressure of situations, conflicts, clashes, the ideas that lie behind a story's themes cease to be merely abstract and become people actually doing things to each other or reacting to the action. A story's energy comes from the degree to which its characters are warring elements, complementary aspects that illuminate each other by contrast and conflict. The only practical reason for a character's existence, in fact, is to interact with other characters. Characters aren't therefore shown as individual figures or separate elements, but exist strictly in terms to their connections with other characters. The main roles are intended as a web of tensions. Each character draws out a different dimension of the protagonist and of other characters. Rhaenyra wishes to fight and be a glorious knight. Her mother Emma wants her instead to settle. Viserys, the king and Rhaenyra's father, wants a son in order to have an heir and Rhaenyra is a woman. 
Alicent, her friend, draws out her childish and playful side. Emma, her dreamy spirit. Uncle Damon, her loyal and supportive dimension. Otto, who wants to win the king's favor and get rid of Prince Damon, is willing to sell his own family to obtain this. The Targaryen prince wishes to sit on the throne while he draws out the king's most soft and defensive dimension. Viserys, on the other side, draws out Damon's manipulative and conniving dimension while he is sweet and supportive with his wife. Our city should be safe for all its people. I agree. That is unpleasant enough as it is. The opening image of the episode shows three important things for the story and works as a premise for the series. An indication of when the story is happening, 200 years before the pilot episode of Game of Thrones. A rule of the world that will supposedly change by the end of the series that men are meant to rule and the possibility that women may rule is not seen positively. And the main theme, that of royal Targaryen succession to the throne. Indeed, the main plotline of this first episode is the birth of King Viserys' child, who the king strongly believes and wishes to be a boy. We then see the protagonist who is the first character to be introduced, Rhaenyra in her ordinary world doing her usual fun activities, riding dragons and hanging out with her friend Alicent Hightower. Right after, her mother expresses what the protagonist will become if she doesn't accept change. You will lie in this bed soon enough, Rhaenyra. This discomfort is how we serve the realm. To which Rhaenyra responds with her desire. I'd rather serve as a knight and ride to battle in glory. She is then shown as she carries out her duties, a cupbearer for the king's council, a council of only men. No, Your Grace. Rhaenyra, you're late. King's cupbearer must not be late. Leaves people wanting to come. Just visiting mother. She then shows her supportive side with Damon and concerns herself that the king doesn't know of his brother's arrival, showing loyalty towards her uncle. Does my father know he's here? No. Get. In her second scene with Alicent, Rhaenyra says that she doesn't want to rule. She just wants to fly, explore, and eat cake. She even professes to want her father Viserys to have the son he's always dreamed of. But other moments in the episode, like the little pauses she gives when Viserys talks about his heir, or the way she shows Alicent that actually she has studied Nymeria, the woman leader of Dorne, reveal the truth. Rhaenyra wishes to rule, and knowing all she can about Nymeria might help her in that. The first 12 minutes offer a deep understanding of the multiple dimension of the protagonist. With this introduction, we have a full picture of her, a royal teenage girl that loves to have fun and that dreams big, but also a prisoner of her gender and of a role that drags her down and keeps her from spreading her wings. Having a full three-dimensional understanding of the protagonist is key in setting up a TV show. Princess Nymeria led her ruin art across the narrow sea on 10,000 ships to flee their Valyrian pursuers. She took Lord Maul's Martell of Dawn to husband, and burnt her own fleet off Sunspear to show her people that they were finished running. Consistent with the main conflict of the episode, King Viserys is introduced as the character with the highest stakes. The plotline evolves around the birth of his child, who he strongly wishes to be a boy, so he can fulfill his desire to have a male heir. His personality is understood the most through an important choice he must take. And as McKee says in his book Story, true character is revealed in the choices a human being makes under pressure. The greater the pressure, the deeper the revelation. The truer the choice to the character's essential nature. When given the choice to either cut open Emma's womb to free the baby but certainly kill her, or proceed and risking both mother and child, Viserys chooses to kill his wife by cutting her womb open and free the baby. This reveals who the king is, a foolish man who will make witless choices to obtain what he wants and who is not fit to rule. After all, the throne does keep hurting him and cutting him too. Damon is, with Rhaenyra, the character with the most nuanced personality. 
His scene leading the city watch in King's Landing shows his ruthlessness and that he will stop at nothing and will easily resort to violence to get what he wants, which is to sit on the throne. More than once, he expresses how he is the heir to his brother. In his fight with Kristen, he shows his more proudful side by not accepting defeat. At the brothel, he shows first his scheming and calculative side and then his more petty and boastful side. When in front of his brother, he is manipulative. Otto instead is shown as a kind of little finger 2.0. He also wants to sit on the throne, his main obstacle is Damon, and his first objective seems to be to get rid of the king's brother and obtain the king's favor. He is willing to sell his daughter Alicent in order to get closer to the throne, which he does towards the end of the pilot. The episode also alludes to characters who will have important roles in the episodes to come, mostly Kristen, who defeats Damon in a one-on-one, -on -one, and Corliss, who sits on the council. A man called Kragas Dreha has styled himself the Prince Admiral of this triarchy. The first hour ends with the protagonist's call to adventure, which is when Viserys, after losing his newborn son, names Rhaenyra his heir. A call she immediately accepts because, as we have seen, her deep desire isn't to deliver babies like her mother, but to live in glory. And in her eyes, being queen is the best way to do so. This call to adventure works as the pilot hook because it promises further conflict in the episodes to come. The relationships between characters will be compromised and they will inevitably clash. Rhaenyra, who has a solid and loyal relationship with her uncle, is now Daemon's main obstacle. Viserys will surely marry Alicent, bringing Otto even closer to the throne. You can easily see how these characters will have a strong conflict against each other. You are the very best of your mother. And I believe, as I know she did, that you could be a great ruling queen. Daemon is your heir. Damon was not made to wear the crown, but I believe that you were. This is a solid pilot. It gives all the necessary ingredients so we can enjoy the future of the series, and it does it with raw and tough scenes and through a character-driven story, brought forward through character choices and desire. The premise gives us what the story will evolve around, the world and the characters show us what has to change, and the hook gives us a taste of future conflict and tension that will only escalate into further violence. These are delivered through two key components of storytelling, tension and conflict. Without tension, there is no audience involvement, and without conflict, there is no story. And without a satisfying story, any series is destined to fail. This is no trivial gesture, Renewa. The dragon saddle is one thing, but the Iron Throne is the most dangerous seat in the realm. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed this breakdown and analysis. If this video does well, maybe I can talk about how House of the Dragon pairs against the new Lord of the Rings Amazon show. In the meantime, check out the Patreon and make sure to subscribe. Thank you again and hope to see you soon.